about government and society with a twist of AI, it's always important to look around and see what's happening in other European countries and um, in other countries globally. Uh, if yesterday we traveled all the way to Sweden, this time um, it's a great chance uh, to see what's cooking in France. So for this, uh, I would like to invite our next speaker, Henry Verdier, French ambassador for digital affairs. Uh, Henry is a French entrepreneur and digital specialist. He was director of digital and information system for the French state and general data administrator. Now he is the French ambassador for digital affairs since October 2018. Welcome, Henry. Hello. Hello, I would rather say bonjour. bonjour. <laughs> you are not the first French speaker today. And uh, in the previous speaker, from the previous speaker, we've heard that uh, such thing as AI doesn't exist. So what would you have yeah, to comment for him? <laughs> I agree. We should speak about automatic classification. It, it would be a better world than intelligence, because AI are not really intelligent. <laughs> Great. So I hope you will cover a bit of that during your presentation and as well as uh, uh, it's interesting to know from, from your experience as we see France as one of the leading countries in Europe, leading uh, the AI agenda. Where do you get uh, most of your inspiration from? Wow, science fiction. <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah, this is uh, you're not the first person who answers that. So um, I, I must start reading some of those myself. So we are ready for well, your presentation. Maybe, if I may, if I may, yeah? maybe we should encourage uh, a modern science fiction because we, we are living in the um, imagination of people of the, from the other century. So we need something more inclusive, uh, thinking about uh, global warming, about uh, sociology, about, uh, yes, inclusiveness, etc. Because we, we, we live with uh, Isaac Asimov and uh, old vision, in fact. So maybe these are the topics for your upcoming book. Yeah. Yeah. All right, great to hear. So we are ready for your presentation. 30 minutes is yours and we meet for a short Q&A afterwards. Okay, thank you. And thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, thank you to the Lithuanian Agency for Science, Innovation and Technology. It's a pleasure to, to share some ideas with you. And, uh, I will try to be brief and to have uh, time for exchange. Um, as you know, France will take over the presidency of the European Union uh, next January in the Slovenian presidency's footstep with a real digital agenda in mind. So I will try also to, to share some French priorities that we will try to, to share with our European friends. Uh, three chapters of the three ideas. The first one is to remember that we, we believe in the opportunities of the digital revolution. I, I want to share this because Yes, everyone speaks more and more about uh, negative external effects, about the role of AI and algorithmic amplification in uh, the attack of the Capitol Hill uh, in, in the 6th of January, about uh, huge monopolies, about the need to regulate. Uh, and in fact, we have to solve those issues. But let's remember that this digital revolution is a uh, a factor of innovation, of knowledge, of solidarity, of uh, creation, and that if we want to act as a policymaker, it's to protect this revolution and to, to be sure to take all the benefit we, we can. And we feel that it will be necessary to, to say this uh, more and more in the next years. And, and that's why we, we if we have one baseline of for baseline this of for digital diplomacy, it's maybe to protect the free, open, secure, and shared digital technology. Um, and of course, AI is the most structuring technology of this uh, re revolution. AI is based on machine learning techniques, deep learning, for example. The use of the robotics in the design, manufacture of and operation of programmable machines, 
an algorithm capable of making autonomous decisions. So that's a huge revolution with strong connection with uh, IT, with 5G, with data policies, and with uh, the way we organize uh, the society. And uh, of course, but I hope that other speakers told this before me, we have, uh, during this re revolution, we have uh, to, to face a very serious uh, ethical question. So some of them are no quite classical, but of course we don't want potentially discriminatory bias, error, misuse, which may be introduced by professional and technical standards. I feel we know that big and awful mistakes were made with AI, but I feel that every researcher, every universities, a lot of ethical committees etc., are trying to fix this issue. And the good news is that we we know that we have an issue here. Another question, maybe more complicated, rely on the delegation of human decision to technologies. Decision with legal consequences, uh, like selection to university, assistance in medical uh, diagnosis. And here there is there are a lot of questions. We can speak and uh, think about automatic justice, for example. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, we have the right to be judged by a human being. Or maybe we, we would prefer uh, more efficiency and more rationality, and, but we need a political conversation here. And we will have to build a, a system of responsibility because we have to decide in case of failure, who is responsible. For example, we have a very interesting discussion about the self-driving car, for example, in case of accident, who will be responsible? For all these kind of questions, which are very important, uh, we consider that we need first a uh, call for enlightened and pluralistic debates. Uh, we did this, and it took 20 years, uh, with bioethics, for example. And it was necessary to have a strong and long conversation with uh, the medicine, but also with the patients and with uh, maybe psychanalysts and maybe sociologists. And, uh, and it took time, but it was necessary. And we, we had the feeling that we are just at the beginning of the same uh, ethical journey and that we have to make this in a pluralistic, multi-stakeholder, open and very serious uh, way. And that's uh, one of the main uh, political issues of the next decade. Um, yeah, so that's my second point. And my uh, last point is that uh, we are discussing uh, international governance of AI uh, in a lot of places. Um, probably other speakers told this, but they are very interesting works in the European Union with the AI Act, uh, in, in the UNESCO, United Nations, OECD, OSC, because uh, Part of the conversation is about a uh, weapon uh, in quite every big university, in quite in a lot of uh, professional organizations. So we have a, a ton of fora. Uh, frankly speaking, I, I know more than 100 fora like this, but that's great. Uh, but at some point, we'll have to, to make. Uh, to, 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 faire émerger, to make emerge uh, some uh, uh, constant uh, conviction, shared conviction. And uh, I think that we, we could agree to promote uh, six major principles for better governance of AI. So uh, one, and also I propose to the discussion uh, six uh, important principles. Uh, the first is that the governance of AI is a subject of a dialogue with all stakeholders. Um, we see, if I may, uh, with respect, two models that Europe don't really like. Uh, one is the Chinese model, uh, which is very state-centric, and uh, the, the state decide, organize, and control the use of AI, and the state use AI to organize itself and to organize society in a way that we, Europeans, we don't really like, so social scoring, etc. But we also have the 
move fast on Brexit's model of the Silicon Valley, uh, where big companies stronger on riches than states uh, move fast, experiment things with uh, uh, pretending to self-regulate uh, themselves. And uh, we don't really like this. So we, in Europe, and I feel that we are quite, we have a common vision uh, as a European. We want a, a real multi-stakeholder conversation uh, with uh, an open governance uh, defined in a multilateral framework associating states, international organization, private actor, and civil society. And we want to support the forums that make this dialogue possible. Uh, as you may know, France did uh, launch one of these forums, which is a global partnership for artificial intelligence. And uh, last week, we did uh, launch the first annual report of this forum, and we tried to promote some interesting and important uh, ideas. The second uh, idea would be that regulatory convergence on the protection of personal data takes precedence over the openness of data flows and the interoperability of systems. As you, you can observe, a lot of people uh, stand for a more open uh, circulation of data, the free flow of data. Um, and yes, I can testify, the more data circulate, the more value we create. But for whom? Who will take this value? And uh, uh, we don't want a world where uh, some big companies or some states can create a lot of value with all private lives, with all autonomy, with all freedom. So for France and most European countries, we, can, we, we have to discuss about a free, free flow of data, but a free flow of data with trust. That was a Japanese proposition to add this with trust. And as European, we promote the idea that trust starts with privacy, like the GDPR. And in fact, we want to uh, weaken the GDPR. Uh, but that's not the only issue. And personally, because as you, you, you did mention, uh, I, I did uh, chair, the, I, I did lead the French policy for open data. So I know how important it is to open data, but that's important too, to, to, to be sure that no one will re-unclose the data you did open. So if we do organize the circulation of data for knowledge, for science, for innovation, we have to be sure that no one will take all your data and build a monopoly around your data. So if we want to organize the circulation of data, we, we, need, to, we need to think carefully and to organize this uh, with trust on the second point. The third point is that um, the idea is that the development of a human-centric AI model make, it, make possible to offer a common framework for the effective impl implementation of AI-based system. We should promote, we should define first, but then promote uh, to the de designers, to companies, a serious reflection about the consequences of AI and how to implement respect of human rights, in particular the protection of, the protection of personal data, but also non-discrimination, how to build a transparent algorithm, how to organize a collective reflection around, around the design of algorithms. That's not easy because uh, the average citizen don't read an algorithm. So if you want a serious conversation around the algorithm. We need to invent some processes, and that's possible. My fourth idea is that the development of an AI vision should be in line with our climate goals and the sustainable development goals. You know, I started my first company in 1995, so I'm an old tech guy, and. Uh, I have the feeling that during these uh, 25 years, we learned to make, to make a, a bad IT. Uh, big data and sometimes AI were a very stupid way to use a computer. Let's calculate everything with huge data center um, without any uh, interest to the environmental consequences. We need to invent uh, a sharpest IT, 
more precise, uh, maybe frugal, if I may. And that's absolutely possible if we decide to, to do this. Five, um, I, we, we consider that we, we need to promote data commons on AI commons. This revolution could be a, re a revolution of empowerment, could share a capacity of creation, knowledge, uh, emancipation of the citizen. Uh, if we are, we, we if we organize ourselves to be sure that we will have something in common, if we can rely on open data, if we can use a simple and basic uh, AI models, if we can contribute to educate the model, and the risk of a world with, I don't know, two or three main AIs uh, in two big companies uh, or two states is a real risk. And we have to, to fight, like our founding fathers, you know, uh, the people who did invent personal computing on internet wanted to share capacity, wanted to share power with the most possible people. Uh, we have to, to take this fight in the AI uh, question. And probably uh, we have a lot of conversation with, within diplomats uh, about how to regulate some uh, misuse of AI. And just to share this with you, it's a completely new context because in the ancient world, 10 years ago, the idea with a bad use of technology were organized around the fact that we, we could forbid the exportation of some military technologies. So we had all these dual technologies policies to forbid exportation of dangerous technologies. But in fact, with AI, quite everything is dual. You can make powerful uh, use of very, very simple open source um, AI model. I could build myself with free open source AI, social scoring system or facial recognition system to, to forbid one race to access to, 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 to a house, etc. That's very easy and low tech. So we have to organize ourselves to, super, to supervise in international law some use we don't want, and for example, civic scoring or lethal autonomous weapons. So that's six ideas I wanted to share with you. And I did respect my time frame, and I think that we have 10 minutes to exchange freely with you. And I thank you for this. And uh, the first uh, the first question would be, uh, how would more regulation on a European level reflect on the progress that uh, we were moving uh, towards very, very, very fast? So as you know, uh, Europe is preparing the um, AI regulation, the AI Act. So uh, with some of the ideas I did share, so that will be a first step. And of course, I don't know if, it's, if, if that's the sense of your question. Some people fear uh, over-regulation or bad regulation or regulation that does forbid uh, innovation. And they're right. We have to build, to build smart regulation. We have to build uh, agile regulation. But for example, so it's not clear completely about AI, but I'm very proud uh, as a European to explain everywhere the, the, the future DSA. The DSA to control social network or, or big platforms, not just social network, will not write what the companies has to do. It will organize a compliance and accountability framework. So the companies will have to expose to an independent authority the risk they create and the strategy they have to fix the risk. And we will just listen, but with a huge capacities of audit, the independent authority will have the right to, to say, okay, show me raw data, open your algorithm, let's discuss. So it's not to, it's an agile regulation. It's a, it will be a constant interaction. So we can invent approach like, like this. 
Uh, we hear some fears that uh, such regulation, AR, or, uh, uh, AI Act, uh, could be similar to data protection. Uh, when it came into force, uh, there were a lot of considerations. So what to do now, how to be compliant. Some of the companies needed to rethink their activities uh, and what are they going to do next. So would you say it has some similarities of uh, what is going to look uh, process-wise? Okay, uh, frankly speaking, uh, when some companies that worth uh, 1,000 billion dollars uh, explain to me that they cannot uh, implement a regulation, uh, I consider this as not serious. Sorry to say this. I don't know who is in the room, but I can continue this conversation. Uh, we don't want some negative externalities. We don't want uh, teenagers committing suicide because of uh, harassment. We don't want a sixth January in Europe. We don't want uh, constant tracking of our privacy. So we don't want this slash. So they, they don't have to make this slash. <laughs> and we decided as a free citizen of uh, democracies. So we have the right to organize the life in all societies in this democratic manner. No? What do yeah, you think? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, you know, whatever example, you do, it needs the, the, to be responsibly done. So I believe you know, if that. I may, the, the other industries did receive a lot of uh, regulation. Uh, car industry uh, made a lot of progresses in security. Nuclear industry has to respect a lot of security norms. Power industry also, uh, transportation also, uh, uh, planes. So they all have to, to protect the, the consumers and the citizens uh, and to respect a certain level of, uh, uh, of transparency. So. Yes, it will be the same for digital industries. Uh, it will be, in fact. All people will reject digital and they will lose a lot. My, my president, President Macron, explained very often, if I can take this analogy, with um, genetically modified organisms, organism, you know, or GM, yeah. GMO. Research did promise to us uh, Whatever you can dream, uh, plants growing in the desert, uh, plants with vaccine, uh, etc. They didn't make this. They did use uh, the, this science just to to take control of the agri agricultural world. So without any benefit for the consumers. And now the consumers are rejecting those technologies, those very promising technologies. And in Europe, we do ban those technologies. That's an awful mistake. And that's because we didn't ask enough at the beginning, enough transparency and enough social impact and enough conversation with the citizen. So let's try not to do the same mistake with AI. I really hope uh, your words come true. But uh, if we speak about digital uh, things in general, you are uh, representing uh, digital affairs uh, in France. So what are other areas, a part of AI, that uh, you consider as your top priority right now? So maybe my top priority is to, and not just mine, <laughs> but sadly, we feel as digital diplomats that there is a risk of internet fragmentation. We are not so far uh, from a world with two or three different internets. And if we have this, it would be a loss for knowledge, humanity, etc. But also a very strong um, strategic instability risk because something that does protect us against cyber warfare, for example, is the fact that we are living being in the same infrastructure and no one tried to destroy the global infrastructure. So if we had different internets, we would have this temptation for aggressivity. So the split internet, the fragmentation of internet is the one major concern. 
Another concern is uh, to civilize, if I may, uh, uh, cyber warfare, because we have to be sure that the fundamental human rights, the Geneva Convention, the UN Charter, will be respected in case of cyber conflicts. And um, we work a lot as digital diplomats uh, about this. A third very important priority is to organize a European uh, and great uh, regulation of those big tech companies. I did speak about the DSA, etc. That's very important. And then we have, um, you know, Europe, we are a great continent, a very solid and a generous continent. So we do help a lot emerging countries. We do stand for freedom of speech, freedom of press uh, everywhere. And we have to take the... Um, to, to, to make this after the digital revolution. So we have to continue to promote culture, education, access to knowledge, um, cultural diversity, freedom of speech after the digital revolution. So a lot of our traditional uh, international policies have to change after this revolution. Um, and maybe the last question for you from my side would be, so how do you organize a work in your cabinet? So maybe you can share some of uh, the best practices. How, you, how do you come up uh, and get approved with uh, most of the innovative ideas? And I hope that um, a lot of uh, public sector officials are watching us today and maybe there is something they can take uh, back to their workplaces. Yeah, in one minute. Um, well, it, uh, take two. <laughs> it's a matter of... Um, of changing the organization, of course. Um, and that's very complicated. Um, but uh, I share with you two ideas. First, if you want to change... so And you know, before I was in, in charge of state modernization. Uh, first, don't think that you can change things uh, just with uh, technology. You need a complete organizational and managerial uh, change. For example, you need to be able to hire uh, very specific people and very bizarre people, <laughs> the geeks. You need to take them in your organization. The second idea is that let's try to make some examples. And maybe I will conclude with this. I will share with you a very uh, a project that we like a lot. Uh, so in less than one minute. From my perspective, one other important issue is the fact that we are living uh, in the terms of services of companies, in fact. We don't live in a, just in European law or national laws. We live in uh, terms of services of companies. And those terms of services, no one reads them because they are on purpose too long. So it would take one year, one year, if you want to read all the terms of services of all the services you are using. So that's that's impossible by design. And they change constantly and uh, without enough clarity. In fact, uh, you don't know this, but they change quite every two weeks and they, they don't notify you way, when they change. And we consider that the consumer, the citizen, the authorities, the regulatory authorities, has a right to know this, to understand this, and to control this. And so that's the, the issue. And the answer, I'm trying a very digital strategy. So with my team, we are trying to launch uh, a contributive common. So uh, an open database with every terms of services of every company in every language, and we track the changes. So we did launch this. Now we, we have 600 companies, but we are asking to everyone in every country to, 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 to help us and to contribute with more and more and more uh, terms of services. And we are making this, we are building a resource for legal tech, for example, for innovators, for a lot of use that we cannot uh, imagine uh, and we don't want to control. So everything is completely open source. The, the source code is on GitHub. You can take the raw data, you can use an API. Uh, so it's a strategy of empowerment, of sharing knowledge and sharing resources. And this idea that you, you can prove in very small examples that a real digi open digital strategy works uh, seems to me very important. Uh, 
talk less and develop more. <laughs> So thank you very much, Henry, for sharing those, those tips and tricks. Uh, so for those watching us, I hope you have a pen or a digital uh, notepad in front of you and uh, you've been managed to grasp some of the ideas that will work for you as well. So thank you very much once again and uh, we will be moving forward uh, with our agenda and let's get ready for our upcoming speaker.